Hello everyone, welcome back to another lecture. This is lesson six as you can see. Uh, we're calling this everyday chemical changes and we're gonna talk about two chemical changes that happen very commonly. In particular, they are above me in the key points. One is corrosion and one is combustion. So these are very, very common. They happen every day uh, all around you. And what, then what you're going to do um, is you are going to explore uh, a bunch of every of chemical and physical changes that happen around you uh, because they do happen very often you just don't realize it let's go so again there are countless chemical changes happening around you every day we're gonna look at two of the common changes you see in your everyday life one corrosion two combustion pause here copy this down and then we'll get into the first one corrosion so corrosion is a chemical property or a behavior of a substance. So when you have a substance that can corrode, uh, you get corrosion. It is a chemical reaction between a metal and an oxygen to form an oxide. So when we talk about corrosion, I always think of rust. And the most common form of corrosion is rust. When iron and oxygen combine, they form iron, iron oxide. And then that is what you see as the brownish color on your vehicle or whatever is rusting. Maybe it's a handrail, um, maybe just any piece of metal that has been exposed to uh, oxygen. And it often gets exposed to oxygen through water because water has oxygen in it. So whenever the metal reacts with oxygen and forms an oxide, we have corrosion. You can see this is what it looks like when uh, we have regular rust. Iron and oxygen, I know iron is Fe, that's a little strange. We'll talk about that more in the next lesson, next lesson actually. Uh, iron is Fe and oxygen is O combined together to get Fe and O to, um, combined together. That is the rust. So that is what you get left with on your car. So iron is usually found in the form of steel alloy and it's, um, it's made from iron and carbon. So rust is particularly damaging as it absorbs water. It can flake off and expose the new layer to oxygen. So you've probably seen um, ru uh, rust flake off of a vehicle. Uh, that is because uh, it is extra damaged and it will come off and expose the next layer and then that will rust and it will expose the next layer and that will rust. Uh, rust causes billions of dollars of damage e each year to buildings, cars, and bridges. So anything that's metal and exposed to uh, oxygen, which is anything that's also exposed to water. So it makes sense that bridges and cars uh, would be rust, um, common places for rust. Other metals that can corrode or rust, quote unquote, would be aluminum, um, that performs aluminum oxide and then after the aluminum oxide is formed that's a protective layer so that can't that doesn't flake off like rust does uh, silver forms silver oxide and it's what we know as tarnish it's kind of a yellowy uh, greeny look on silver you might have seen it on silver um, cutlery before if it's been sitting out for a while the oxygen will put this layer of silver oxide onto it and that'll that is tarnish so other metals also corrode. Um, you can prevent corrosion by painting the surface uh, and that protects it from oxygen. So we protect our cars by painting them in a very robust coat of paint. Uh, whenever they chip, we try to fill that in as much as possible so that it doesn't rust. It's inevitable eventually that different parts will rust. Um, but you want to keep the water and the air away from it as much as possible. You can use different materials like plastics. You can coat the metal with another metal. Um, galvanized nails are an example. Any galvanized metal doesn't rust because it is coated with a different metal that is non-corrosive. The second key point is combustion. So whenever uh, there's a reaction between a hydrocarbon and oxygen to produce carbon dioxide, water and energy, which is the light and the heat that you feel. Um, so hydrocarbon is anything with hydrogen and carbon in it. And then we will get into what exactly that means in future lessons. Just know hydrogen and carbon. 
A hydrocarbon is a compound um, that's made of hydrogen and carbon. It's often a fossil fuel. So I like, just like to think of this as gasoline. Gasoline is a fossil fuel and it burns and makes and goes into carbon dioxide and water. Anything that burns is combustion. Uh, fossil fuels like coal, oil, natural gas are formed from plants and animals buried in the earth. Um, you need a few things for combustion. The fuel, which is these fossil fuels, you need oxygen and you need a heat source. So many substances are, are highly combustible and are used as fuels. Wood, kerosene, diesel, gasoline, these are all hydrocarbons. Wood is made of hydrogen and carbon as well as kerosene, diesel, and gasoline. So the carbon dioxide that is produced um, contributes to the greenhouse effect. If we go back, uh, CO2 is produced, carbon dioxide, and that is the greenhouse gas that affects us and causes global, uh, I should say climate change, not global warming. Um, so combustion is overall bad, is what we're trying to get at here. Combustion puts these fossil fuels into the air, and that is not good for climate change. Um, you want to burn as little as possible, especially fossil fuels. Um, what we're going to do now is we are going to go through this story and we are going to, uh, I want you to circle the physical changes and underline the chemical changes. And I want you to pay attention because what we're going to do after this is you're going to write your own story. Now that we've learned all about physical and chemical changes as well as a few that happen around you, I want you to try to be more aware of the different changes that occur around you every single day. So let's get into the story. A brand new day. You go into the kitchen and open the fridge and pour a glass of milk. Before you even drink it, you can tell from the smell that the milk has soured. So you can, if something smells different, that's a property that's different. So that would be a chemical change. I would underline that. Milk has soured. You make a glass of ice water instead. Suddenly you hear your cat screech. You run to help her and see she has stepped on a rusty tack. Mm, rusty. So that would be a chemical change because it is rusty. Um, you know from science class that it rusted due to oxidation. I was just telling you about that. So we have um, a chemical change right here with the rusty tack. You run to call the emergency traveling vet to come to your house. As you're walking back to the kitchen, you notice that some of your plants are dying and beginning to decay, and that some of the salt water has evaporated out of your fish tank. Okay, so the dying and decaying, you know that as plants die, they turn into essentially dirt. So that is a change in their properties. So dying and decaying would be a chemical change while the salt water evaporating would be a physical change. So I would circle that. Water evaporating is a physical change. It's still water, it just looks different. You take a mental, uh, ooh, we're missing a little bit here, but I can read it here. You uh, make a mental note to take care of both after school. Let's just go up, you can see. Uh, you make a mental note to take care of both after school. You go back to get your ice water, but find that the ice has melted. You're so thirsty you don't care and drink it anyway. So ice melting is a physical change and that is a circle. Yes, we are circling the melting of the ice water. Uh, you suddenly realize how hungry you are and take an apple from the counter and bite into it. Physical change because you are changing uh, the shape of the apple, but it is still apple. Yum. Then you hear a glass breaking. Physical change. Glass is still glass, even though it's broken. You run to see what's happened and find that the traveling vet accidentally broke a window, but he promises to pay for the damage before he takes your cat away to attend to her injury. What a day, and it's only just begun. You go back to the apple, but it has turned brown. Okay, so the decaying of something, it changes its properties. That is a uh, chemical change. We're going to underline that one. You decide to make some eggs and toast instead. You first whip the eggs. So if you're whipping the eggs, it's still eggs. You just are turning them into something that looks different. So whipping the eggs is a physical change. I would circle that one. Uh, and cooking them would be a chemical change, underlining that. You're turning them into something that is different. You pop a piece of bread into the toaster for a chemical change. You're going to turn the bread into toast, which a few minutes later turns nice and brown. You melt some butter 
and t uh, on the toast, melting butter would be a physical change because it's still butter. It's just melted. So we're going to underline that one. Uh, sorry, circle that one. You think about dyeing your hair purple, that would be a physical change. It's still hair, uh, just a different color. I know that's maybe a little ambiguous, uh, but I would say that hair is still hair. That'd be a physical change. Then remember how your parents reacted when your sister did that. So instead, you just decide to finish breakfast uh, and catch the bus, hoping the crazy part of your day has ended. Yes, I hope so as well. So I hope you can come up with a story, um, maybe not as elaborate as that one, but that goes through as many chemical and physical changes as that. So your job is a changes story. You will write a story depicting a scene similar to the one in the story we just read, a regular day in the life with a twist or two. In the story, you must include at least eight physical changes and eight chemical changes. Each should be identified with a different color pen or a different shaped box or highlighted differently on the computer. Uh, the purpose of this is to demonstrate your knowledge of physical and chemical changes that happen around you every single day. Uh, if you guys have any questions or you need any help, please, please let me know. Um, but thank you very much for watching, everyone, and I will see you soon.